welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Radsa X2L. This is a low-cost x86 based single board computer with an Intel J4125 processor and RP2040 GPIO. So let's go and take a closer look. So, here we have our Radsa X2L, which is advertised with 2, 4 or 8 gigabytes of RAM and with or without onboard EMMC flash storage. And what we have here in this rather attractive box is the 4 gigabyte model with no EMMC. And this cost me $52. To keep the CPU cool, we also need to have a heatsink, which cost me an extra $9.90 before they sold out. And uh, here we have that very heatsink in this little plastic box, and this brought the total cost to $62, or about £50, plus taxes and of course shipping. And if you're wondering, it would have cost an extra $20 for the 8GB model, and an extra $10 for 32GB of onboard EMMC flash storage. Although in April 2024, only the 4GB model, the one I've got here, with no EMMC, is actually available. So, let's open this up. First of all, we're going to get rid of the, uh, the shiny shrink wrap. I think we can use Stanley and Knife just to uh, help start that off. There we are. Oh yes, and it's a lovely box underneath. I do like a matte laminate packing. Can we get in? It's going to be one of these tricky unboxings for me again, isn't it? Can I open it up? I can open it up. There we are, eventually it's come off. There we are, and hopefully, do I do that? Yes, hopefully. How do I get in? It's a beautiful cardboard box that I, I can't open. I'll get in eventually. There we are, a new single board computer inside and a rather interesting one, an interesting form factor. Let's just uh, open up the little bag. There we are, keep the sticker intact like that. Crinkle, crinkle and all that. And yes, here we have our new Radsa x86 SBC. And if you're wondering, the form factor is 155 millimeters by 80 millimeters, an unusual design. And of course, we should open up the heatsink, which I've got uh, over here. Let's just get into this box. Let's bring in Mr. Scissors and just cut through that like that. Hope that's gone through. Has it gone through? It has. I'm still trying to get in. There we are. In here is the heatsink. I hope, yes, it is. It looks heatsink like. It's sealed in, isn't it? Don't know quite why. There we are. But uh, anyway, here is the heatsink. Oh yes, it's got a thermal pad on the back, and this will mount, of course, on top of our uh, processor down there to give us what I think is going to be a really nice small computer system. At the heart of the X2L lies an Intel Celeron J4125 quad-core CPU with a base frequency of 2 GHz rising to a boost of 2.7. And the chip also has Intel UHD 600 graphics supporting DirectX 12 and OpenGL 4.4. Also on the top of the board we find the RAM here 4 GB which is 2400 DDR4. There's also a CMOS battery holder, which takes a CR1220 cell, and whilst one is not provided, Radsa do caution that if a battery is not fitted, the board will spend one minute initialising its BIOS on every boot. And so I think I'm going to buy a battery for the X2L. Further up from the battery holder, we find the RP2040 microcontroller, just here, and if we cut to a close-up, it's great to see a Raspberry Pi logo on an x86 computer. And this chip works with a 40-pin GPIO header that's positioned just next to it. Also close by, there is an e-keyed M.2 slot, and this can take a wireless module, and so it's not a surprise that the X2L does not have onboard Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Turning to the main front edge, we find a 3.5mm audio jack, what a radical idea these days, and it's even got a microphone input. And then following that we have two full-size HDMI connectors that both support up to a 4K 30p display. 
Moving along, we then find two Type-A USB 3 ports, a gigabit Ethernet port, and the USB-C port for powering the board with a 12 volt 2 amp power supply being required. And on the end, there's a little switch, which doesn't seem to be labeled in the uh, diagrams of the board I can find. I don't know what this switch does, but it must be very exciting indeed. Around the corner, we then find two Type-A USB 2 ports, and between them a switch of known functionality, this is a boot selector button for the RP2040. Spinning 90 again on the second lung edge, we then return to the GPIO connector, a four pin fan header, and then down here we've got a power LED and a power switch. Although it's worth noting that the board can be set in its BIOS to boot when it's powered up. Finally, our last rotation takes us to the second short edge, where there's nothing to capture our attention. We've got the RAM chip sputter. There's nothing to see here in terms of more connectors. And so the only place to now look for more hardware excitement is underneath, where we do find a couple of things. For a start, we find a CMOS reset button, and we also find an M keyed M.2 slot, but accepts a 2280 NVMe SSD. And uh, this is the only form of storage on this board, unless you get a model with onboard EMMC. And I would note I'm slightly disappointed because the mounting screw is not included for the M.2 drive. But uh, that's the only negative I've got, I think, on this board. Other than that, it is a very well-priced, no-nonsense x86 SBC, offering all the basics required for many applications. It's also worth noting that Radsa claim that the X2L will be available until at least September 2030, which is interesting given that its J4125 CPU, whilst a nice processor, was launched in 2019 and is now discontinued. So hopefully they bought up enough stock. Greetings. Here I am back again with the board now all up and running. And I fitted the heatsink, as you can see, which went on very easily with four little screws. And I've also fitted a CMOS battery to keep the X2L happy when booting. And underneath, I've also added a 500 gigabyte Crucial P3 NVMe SSD. And whilst this is a PCIe 3.0 drive, I forgot to mention earlier that the connector here on the X2L is PCIe 2.0 which is what a J4125 CPU supports. And I don't know how many lanes are dedicated here to the NVMe drive. There are six lanes in total available on a J4125, so it might be four lanes for this uh, NVMe slot. We will find out, but uh, there's no question that the storage bottleneck here will be the interface rather than the SSD I fitted. So let's see what we're running. And oh look, I've installed Linux Mint. And because the X2L is an x86 SBC, and yes, technically I mean x86-64, I'm using x86 in the modern way to distinguish between x86 ARM and RISC-V rather than a particular category of x86. But uh, anyway, because we have an x86 system here, we can run Windows. The J4125 processor does support Windows 11 officially. We can run Linux distros, we can run FreeBSD, we can run Chrome OS Flex. So we've got nothing to uh, worry about in terms of software support for the Radsa X2L. And I'm very pleased to report that Linux Mint runs very well indeed on this system. Let's do one of my standard tests of running up a LibreOffice writer, and it comes up uh, nice and quickly. That's pretty good, isn't it? And you could certainly use this as a small desktop computer. And I know this is not what many people will use the X2L for. And indeed, we can see here the storage for the RP2040 on this board, reminding us of all the exciting hardware possibilities that exist with the X2L with its GPIO hardware. But for now, let's uh, leave that to one side and uh, just check out how things are running here in Linux Mint. I've got down here system information running so we can see what we have. It's definitely on J4125 quad-core system with uh, four gigabytes of memory. Everything's running fine, UHD 600 graphics. I've got down here also system monitor where our CPU cores are uh, pootling along, not got a lot to do at the moment. We've still got plenty of memory free in our four gigabytes. I know some people tell you today you can't possibly use a computer with less than some like 32 gigabytes of memory. You certainly have to have eight, they will say, not true. You can live perfectly happily in four gigabytes, certainly 
running Linux as, uh, as we can see here. So uh, let's check out some other parts of the system. Let's check out uh, the speed of our SSD. Got a terminal here. Let's just do an uh, LSBLK, list block devices, just to see there's our NVMe drive and also the storage on the uh, RP2040. But uh, let's test the speed of the NVMe drive. I've got the command here in the buffer. Let's just run that. Remember, we've got a PCIe 2.0 interface. It wants my password. There we are. See what it gives us. Very exciting. It should be reasonable, I hope. There we are, 1349 megabytes a second. I'm guessing, therefore, we have got four lanes in operation here on our PCIe 2.0 interface. That's a good speed for an NVMe drive on an SBC at this price point. So let's also run up a web browser, which is a perfectly good system for using a web browsing stuff. We can get to explaining computers. We can check out SBCs. I'll have to add this to the uh, x86 board page, won't I have to add it on there fairly soon? And uh, I've also done a few bookmarks here, as I always do. Let's go to uh, bookmarks and lists, other bookmarks, and uh, let's look at the Chrome GPU internals. We've got a good reporting here of hardware acceleration. That's always uh, nice to see. And if we go back to the bookmarks, I've also bookmarked the uh, OpenGL test, the aquarium test, which I often use, which is good to see as well. Oh, look, lots of little fishes, 500 of them swimming around at about 50 frames a second. That's uh, perfectly reasonable. Uh, and of course, you want to see how YouTube works. It should work fine on a J4125 system, but let's just uh, prove that to you. You could use this as a nice little uh, media PC. Let's just get this up and running full screen. And there we are, playing 1080p video, no problems at all, no frames are being dropped. It's what we would expect on this system, but it is good to see that it works. It's uh, certainly got all kinds of potential applications, the uh, X2L. Anyway, talking of that, the final thing I want to do here is to test out the performance of Caden Live, the video editor. Yes, I've installed Caden Live on this four gigabyte system. It should run fine. Let's just run it up. Here it comes, and uh, there we are. And I've got my standard test edit over here, which I've used on many, many computers previously. And if we just to try and play this, it's using proxy clips when it plays the transition here absolutely fine. There's no doubt you could edit HD video on this system. The uh, NVMe SSD certainly helps here. And let's now run our standard render test. Let's go to project and uh, render like that. I've got the script all set up. And just to remind you of previous results, this test runs in 2 minutes 19 seconds on a Raspberry Pi 5, 1 minute 23 seconds on the M100 system I tested fairly recently, and uh, in 0 minutes and 52 seconds on an Orange Pi 5. So let's see how fast it runs here on this J4125 system. Let's uh, start the script, and as usual, we'll speed on through. And there we are, a result of 1 minute 30 seconds. So not as fast as an N100 system as we would expect, but significantly faster than a Raspberry Pi 5, if not quite as fast as an Orange Pi 5. But I'm still very impressed with the general performance of this system. Guess what? I've now plugged my test LED onto the end of the GPIO header because I want to test if we've got control of the RP2040 microcontroller. And uh, over here in Linux Mint, earlier I installed Thony with a sudo apt install Thony, and it's sitting here in programming, so let's uh, run up Thony. I've not actually done this yet. And uh, there we are, it's prompting us to install MicroPython for the Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm not going to go through all of this in great detail, but it's just like having a Raspberry Pi Pico plugged into a computer, and I've talked all about that in many other videos. So for now, we'll just close this down, and I'd note that our Pico storage has disappeared from up here, as we would expect. And so now, let's just do a test. Let's try a, a from machine import pin, like that, and then we'll define LED to be pin 25, what I've plugged into, and that's going to be a pin out, we want it to be an output, and if we now bring in a shot of the LED and we type LED.high like that, and hopefully, yes, it works. I shouldn't be amazed when things like this work, should I? But it, 
It is amazing. We've controlled the LED using some code here in Sony in Linux Mint. And uh, if we're lucky, we can uh, turn it off again. Let's just do a uh, low like that. And oh, that's very exciting as well. But uh, not as exciting as when we do high like uh, that. There we are. We prove we've got control of the RP2040 microcontroller, which opens up all kinds of maker possibilities. As you probably gathered, I really like the Radsa X2L. Why? Well, for a start, it's competitively priced. It's got an x86 processor, so it can run a very wide range of operating systems. And I've also been conducting some more tests. For example, I've tested power consumption, which came out at about 3 watts at idle, rising to a maximum of 13 watts at load. And I've also tested a SATA SSD connected via USB 3 adapter, and the speed of this drive came out at 329 megabytes a second, which is respectable for an SBC at this price point. I'd also note that the fan on here, the fan on the cooler, is very quiet, and there are great settings in the BIOS, so you can set things so the fan doesn't come on at all at low loads. And so this is a great board, and one I expect to return to for a project or two in future videos. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,